Hey everyone, this is JT Movie, and I'm the animator of Omega, unfortunately, and today we're going to be looking at rotoscoping. So when I animate, I use every method possible to get my animation done. It could be from anywhere from frame by frame to tweening, and of course, rotoscoping. So first, you're of course going to need a video. Uh, normally, I create my own personal reference files, but for the sake of tutorial, we're going to use a professional reference file. This is from Endless References. I'm going to use an athletic male vault. Okay, so you're going to get your video, scroll down to file, and push import, import video, embed H.264 video and timeline. This is for design only. So the video itself, it's not really part of your animation. It's just going in and then you can delete it later. Then you're going to look for your file, hit next. Then you're going to change it to a graphic and delete the audio. You don't need the audio. Normally these videos for references, you're not going to have audio anyway, but just in case you just delete it. You don't need it, of course. Sometimes these can take a, just a second or two to import, uh, but Animate CC is actually really good at importing video and it keeps the quality. I used to have to make videos really terrible quality just to put them in, but this I don't lose any quality. Then you're going to change it to play once. And I change the uh, brightness to plus 35. This is so when you draw on top of it, you can see your lines without having to put anything in a group layer or anything. So expand the timeline until the video stops and doesn't play anymore. That means the video, that's how far it's, it's going to go. Uh, and then you're going to go through where certain keyframes are that you think this are these are important frames. These are important frames to keep it smooth. So as you go through, you're going to use your period and comma key. So those are basically your arrows to go through the timeline. You go through it like you would use your arrow keys. So you go tapping the right one to go through. And as you're doing that, you're going to push F6 when you find a keyframe that you like. So tap, 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 F6, tap, 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 F6. And just keep that process going until you get through the entire animation. So I'm just finding keyframes that I like uh, to keep it smooth. Then now we're going to delete all the frames you don't need. This is just extra space. So you're going to select all these, right click and convert to blank keyframes. The key for flash is shift F5. F5 usually create a, creates a frame. When you hold down shift, it deletes the frame. So you're gonna go through the frames you don't want to delete. I have it at zero, that's my button, so you don't have to hold shift and F5. It's actually much faster. So you just go through on your keyboard right here, going through like this and then typing zero every time you don't want a frame. That's how I set it up, but shift F5 is their standard key. So you just go through, tap, 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 so you just keep all the frames that you need. And if you accidentally delete a frame, just push Control Z, instantly bring it back, no big deal. Now we're gonna create a layer above it, and I'm gonna call it body, and then I'm gonna convert them all to just keyframes. Okay, so now we're going to trace over this. I have a character. This is my character Omega, Devin. Basically what you're going to do, it depends on what kind of character you have, you're going to convert that person into the thing you're tracing. And you do it as you're drawing. So he has a Henley shirt, he has jeans, he has shoes. So as I'm drawing here, I'm going to convert it into that. I use a pencil tool and I usually use a 0 0.3 as my standard line base. I used to use one and that just it just looks it just looks too cartoony. I don't know. So I know what he looks like. This is his design. So now I'm gonna go over the drawing. Okay, so now as I'm drawing, you can see that I'm drawing lines through things. I'm just like kind of, I'm not even really, it's like I'm drawing really sloppily. Um, that's okay. It's You just have to worry about keyframes when you do this. There's going to be certain keyframes in this uh, scene where you want the drawing to be as good as it can be because that's where the eye is going to catch it. In between stuff, you can go more or less fairly sloppily. So I'm drawing lines through everything. And I'm gonna keep all the anim I'm gonna keep all the frames like this, and I'm going to show you a little bit kind of fast way to delete them later. It's gonna more or less look the same like this, except without any extra lines. So yeah, what you're looking for is in betweens and keyframes. Uh, the keyframes is where you want to do your best drawings, and usually that's uh, at the beginning. Uh, that's definitely at the end of an animation, and somewhere in the middle, you want to find. You want to almost like divide it by three or something like find those special frames that you want to look good because the eye is going to catch it. Everything else in between can go really sloppily. 
And in total, doing this, just tracing this uh, as is for 20 frames, it took me 15 minutes. So that's sort of like a frame or two a minute. That's actually not too bad. I used to sort of take every single frame very delicately. And honestly, it doesn't really, it doesn't really help. Uh, you want it to look good. Of course, you want it to look good. But it kind of messes with the flow and things can kind of get a little jaggedy. And it honestly takes forever. I could be sitting here for hours just trying to get every single frame here right, but really I just need the key moment. So when he lands here, I'm going to draw a little bit better than all the other drawings to make sure it's good. And I, I probably could have done this a lot better, but just for a tutorial, I'm kind of going a little bit faster. And what you also might be noticing is that I'm not drawing the head because what I normally do with heads is that I have pre-made heads that I am going to copy and paste later. Also hands, hands are kind of tricky. They kind of break your, uh, sort of your flow and drawing, you know, and it's kind of a mixed bag. It really depends on the keyframes. You normally, that's where you save, you know, your good hand, your hand drawings for. But of course, if you do do a lot of animations where you're just kind of drawing like a circle for the hand, it's gonna, it's gonna look like what it is. So that can be a problem. Uh, I normally have pre-made hands and I'm going to post those in a second here. Now we're gonna delete the lines. And the best trick I know is to hold down your shift key and then select all the lines you want to delete. So I'm just holding down shift here and I'm just collecting. I don't need this, I don't need this. This goes through the leg, that shouldn't go there. This goes through his arm, that shouldn't go there. Click, click, click till I find it and then I push the delete key and then I do it again. And then I just repeat this process. There's some other tricks to this too. For instance, if you're going through this animation and you notice that there is a gap. So there's a gap here in his hand on the left right here. So as you're selecting through, you can just Keep holding down on the shift key. Don't break your rhythm and just move the line and lock it in. Make sure you have your locked, uh, your line lock on the magnetic key right there. Yeah, so you don't have to break your flow. So none of your lines get moved or anything. You still have your line selected. As you're doing that, you just move it over and click it, lock it up. So if you see any gaps like that, just keeps the flow going, no issues. And if you accidentally click the wrong line, uh, just let go of your shift key and then push control Z and your lines will come back the previous lines you selected. Cause the last thing you want to do is have to start all over selecting your lines. So we have our last keyframe here and now I'm going to get my pre-made hands you just copy and paste them, put them in. Okay. And now the heads, I have pre-made heads, uh, for all my characters. This is so I don't have to redraw heads with a couple exceptions. I mean, I would be here for hours, just, just tracing over. It, it would take forever. You want to change things up. Uh, to make it look fluid. You want to move eyes. You want to sort of copy the animation that you're going over. Look at eye movements, look at facial expressions. So it can be as close to as possible, look animated as possible. And then readjusting the size can be kind of tricky at first, but once you get it going. For this animation, we're just going to need a front head. He just jumps front forward and then you can manipulate it to accustom to how he's, I mean, sometimes he's looking down a little bit. Sometimes his eyes are closed. Uh, his nose is a little bit down, so you manipulate uh, given given what what you have. Uh, sometimes you have to readjust the neck to fit. You know, when I rotoscope, I make sure whatever I'm going over f mostly fits the character's body that I'm going for. Okay, and then you just keep copying that head and just move it back, get it a little bit smaller. You can use the the wiring tool so you can see behind, so you can line up the head to a pretty good size that matches up to the original head. So it looks really consistent and you know, it's not all over the place. It's not too big, not too small. It doesn't change frequently and you know, it just looks as smooth as possible. My heads are all pre-designed, so they're all in groups and everything in them is a group. The hair is a group, the eyebrows are a group, the eyes are a group, the nose is a group. The mouth is a group. They're all groups, so I can just move them and manipulate them. Right here is kind of looking down a little bit, and his eyes are kind of closed, so... And I can just go in and, you know, adjust accordingly. I can just delete his eyeballs if I need to, to match up with the scene. The amount of time to make pre-made heads for your characters takes a long time, but it's totally worth it in the end, because then <laughs> you're saving a ton of time, so you don't have to redraw, 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 to redraw. It can look unnatural, but you adjust accordingly to make it as natural as possible. And now I'm going to color it like I did in my color tutorial. And then I'm going to implore what I used in my lighting tutorial, but this is going to be like a really cheap kind of way to do the lighting. Uh, I didn't really go through it the normal way I do the lighting, just as a quick tutorial to get you the gist of it. Here it is. I space out the frames. I usually, um, I'm on 
what is it, two frames or something. I'm doing 24 frames per second. So by default, every frame has to be uh, divided out by two frames. Uh, so to do that really fast, you're gonna do like this motion between uh, F5 and the, the arrow key, the period arrow key to the right. And you're kind of gonna hopple them back and forth like that to space out the frame. Um, and that's it, there you go. Uh, All together, this took me an hour honestly just an hour and I think that's that's fairly okay and the more frames you have of course the more it's gonna take but the fact that you're doing them all at once it's a little bit shorter what I normally do is I do all my animations all together I have hundreds and hundreds of frames and then I just go through all these processes one at a time so that's the gist of it uh, for rotoscoping there's other ways you can do there's other methods you can implore with this if you're going to use rotoscoping yeah and just find what's best for you Alrighty, uh, I have an animation called Omega. If you like sci-fi action, uh, superheroes, that kind of stuff, uh, check it out. And I have a Patreon where I post updates from the episode. You can check that out too at patreon.com slash jtmovie. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.